Welcome to hypercoagulable states. In this video, we will focus on antithrombin deficiency. Over the next few minutes, we will discuss the following take-home points. Antithrombin inhibits thrombin. Antithrombin also inhibits factors 9A, 10A, 11A, and 12A. Antithrombin deficiency primarily causes venous thromboembolism. Let's first take a look at antithrombin in action. Let's begin with a simplified version of the coagulation cascade beginning with factor 12A, which activates 11A. 11A activates 9A. 9A acts in the presence of its cofactor, factor 8A, to activate factor 10 to 10A. Factor 10A acts in the presence of its cofactor, factor 5A, to activate prothrombin, or factor 2, to factor 2A, or thrombin. Finally, thrombin cleaves fibrinogen to fibrin. Now, we're discussing the action of antithrombin, so let's focus on thrombin. Antithrombin directly acts against thrombin. However, antithrombin also acts against factors 9, 10, 11, and 12, thus inhibiting their activity. However, when there is antithrombin deficiency, antithrombin's natural antithrombotic mechanisms fail. This leads to constitutive activity of the factors and promotes increased thrombosis risk. Let's now look at the clinical syndrome of hereditary antithrombin deficiency. There are two types of hereditary antithrombin deficiency. Type 1 deficiency is a quantitative deficiency that leads to reduced protein synthesis. Type 2 deficiency is a qualitative deficiency with reduced protein function. The primary clinical manifestation of hereditary antithrombin deficiency is venous thromboembolism. Another important manifestation is renal disease, which occurs rarely due to deposition of fibrin thrombi in the kidneys. Patients with antithrombin deficiency can also develop antiheparin resistance, meaning that they require higher levels of heparin than expected to achieve a therapeutic APTT. In this case, patients may receive antithrombin concentrates. Let's look at causes of acquired antithrombin deficiency. Antithrombin activity can be low in the setting of acute thrombosis, disseminated intravascular coagulation, liver disease, nephrotic syndrome, asparaginase therapy, and vitamin K antagonists. Levels can also be low with ECMO, hemodialysis, surgery, and trauma. For most patients with an acute thromboembolic event or acute illness, Testing should be delayed until the patient recovers or is no longer receiving an anticoagulant. In summary, antithrombin inhibits thrombin. Antithrombin also inhibits factors 9A, 10A, 11A, and 12A. And antithrombin deficiency causes venous thromboembolism. This ends our video on hypercoagulable states, antithrombin deficiency.